What is up and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at how to add fractions that have different denominators. So let's go. Okay, so what do we need to remember today? Well, we need to remember that we need common denominators. What does common mean? Common means the same. So we need the same denominators. Well, what is a denominator? Well, if I look at a fraction, let's say two thirds, the denominator is the digit on the bottom. And what that tells us is how many the whole is being split into. So if I draw out a pizza like this, imagine that was a circle and I was a better drawer, the denominator would show me that I've split this pizza into three even slices, just like that. The number on the top is the numerator, and this shows us how many of those slices of pizza we're actually counting. So in this case, I have two, one, two. So two thirds would look like this pizza, just like this. But the key detail here is the denominator is the digit at the bottom. So now when we look at this first example, six tenths added to two fifths, we can see that we have a denominator of 10 and a denominator of five. But we were told the denominators have to be the same. So we have a problem. How are we going to solve it? Well, let's have a look. If I have six tenths and I'm adding it to two fifths and we've been told that we need the same denominators, well, I need to know now that I can convert one of these fractions into an equivalent fraction, a fraction with the same value, but with different digits and I'm gonna show you what that means. Basically, we want this five to be a 10. So let's put it over here as a 10. And how did I get from five to 10? Well, I multiplied my five by two. Two times five is 10. So now when I look at my numerator, if I do the same and multiply it by two, I have two times two, which is four. I've now created this equivalent fraction, four tenths, and I can get rid of two fifths. Because four tenths is equivalent, meaning it has the exact same value, but it has the digits we want, the 10 in the denominator column. But let me prove to you first of all that four tenths is equivalent to two fifths. And I'm gonna draw out a little chocolate bar. Now this first one, two fifths, was split into five, and we had two of them, one, two. And my next fraction was four tenths. So I'm gonna have a chocolate bar of the same size, but this time it's split into 10. So I'm gonna split it into five just like we did before, but now I'm gonna split it into 10 by going through the middle like that, and now I have 10 even sections. Now when I count out four tenths, I have one, two, three, four. And look what we've made. We have the exact same value, the exact same quantity of chocolate. It just looks a little different. We've split the first one into five and taken two, but we've split the bottom one into 10, but we've taken four. If you're not too familiar with equivalent fractions, go back and watch that video on this channel because equivalent fractions is something you really need to understand before you can start adding fractions. But back to our question. So we now have six tenths added to not two fifths, because we don't like that, but to four tenths. Now all I need to do is understand that my tenths will never change because I'm adding in tenths. Six tenths added to four tenths would be the same as saying six apples added to four apples is gonna give me something apples. Well, six tenths added to four tenths is gonna give me something tenths. So my denominator doesn't change in my answer. If I'm adding tenths, I'm gonna get an answer of tenths. And all I need to do is add the digits on my numerator row. So I have six added to four, which is also 10. And now when I look at 10 tenths, I can actually see that, that would just be called one whole. So the answer to my first question is one or 10 tenths. Okay, question two, four eighths added to five sixths. Okay, well now I have a problem because when I'm trying to get either of these denominators to be the same, I can't see an easy fix. Six and eight, I cannot get them to be the same in any quick way. So what can I do? Well, I can look for the lowest common multiple the LCM. Lowest common multiple means a number that's in both of the times tables of eight and six. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is draw out a little list of the times tables of eight. So I'd have eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. And I'm gonna pause at 48 because I know a little trick that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then the multiples of six are six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and then there it is, 48. So I now know that 48 appears in both of the eight and the six times table. 
So I can now use 48 as my new denominator in both of these equivalent fractions. But what I need to do is think about how did I get from 6 to 48? How many groups of 6 are there in 48? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I got 6 times 8 equaled my 48. So to keep my numerator equivalent to the, on the fraction, I now need to get my 5 and also times that by 8 and 5 times 8 is 40. So my equivalent fraction to 5 sixths is 40 over 48. Now let's do the other one on the other side. How did I get from 8 to 48? Well I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I multiplied it by 6 but if I multiply the denominator by 6 to keep it equivalent I need to multiply the numerator by 6 as well and 4 times 6 is 24. Wow, a lot of work to get my two new fractions, 24 over 48 and 40 over 48. Let's just recap what we just did there. First of all, we realized that we needed to get a common denominator of 6 and 8, my two existing denominators. And the only way to get a common denominator was to try and find the lowest common multiple. And the lowest common multiple I can find by doing the multiplications of those numbers. So I had 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. And then on the other side I had 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 34, 36, 42, 48. I found the common multiple, 48, and I used it as my new denominator. But then I realized that I needed to work out how many groups of 6 I multiplied to get to 48, and it was eight groups and how many groups of eight did I multiply to get to 48 it was six groups and then I simply did the same thing to the numerators to get my equivalent fraction but there is a trick and I'm going to show it to you now look at the coincidence we have here my two original denominators were eight and six and in the end I ended up multiplying my six by eight to get to 48 and on the other side I got my eight and I multiplied by six can we see the connection six was my other denominator, this one over here. And eight was this denominator. So in the end, I've ended up just multiplying the denominators together to get to 48. And if you think about it, that's because if I multiply these denominators together, eight times six, I am going to get a common multiple, a number that's in both the eight and the six times table. And in this case, we've got 48. So all we need to do really is multiply the two denominators together to get to our new denominator of 48. And we're going to do that in the next example. But for now, I have 24 48 added to 40 48. And if we remember, I keep the denominator the same because I'm adding denominators 48. I'm adding 48 together, just like if I was adding apples together, I would still end up with an answer of something apples. And in this case, I have 24 plus my 40. So I have 64 48. So my answer is 64 48. Now what I could do at this point is simplify this down because these are very large numbers. So I could just cut them in half and make it a new equivalent fraction. I could have 32 24s, but I see they're both even numbers again. So I can do that again and say 16 twelfths. And again, they're both still even again. So I can go eight sixes and they're still even. So I can cut them in half again and end up with four thirds. So my simplified fraction is four thirds. Now, if I want to be really smart, I can actually realize that this is a improper fraction because I have a larger numerator than I do denominator. So this means I've actually got four thirds. So if I cut a chocolate bar into thirds, count them out, I have one, two, three, but I actually have four. So I need to get another chocolate bar, cut it into thirds again, and I end up with four on another chocolate bar. So in other words, what I actually have is one whole chocolate bar and one third of the other chocolate bar. So four thirds is actually one and one third. But that was converting between an improper fraction to what's called a mixed number. Not really what we're focusing on in this lesson, but if you wanna learn how to do that, there is a dedicated video for that on this channel. Search for converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. Okay, our final question. We're gonna do this really quickly with our new skill trick that we just learned in the last question. Three quarters added to two fifths. Well, to get common denominators, I now know that all I need to do is multiply them by each other. So four times five is 20. How did I get from five to 20? I multiplied by four. 
how did I get from 4 to 20 and multiply it by 5? So looking at this fraction here, how did I get from 5 to 20? I multiplied by 4, so I now need to do that to the numerator as well. And 2 times 4 is 8. So my equivalent fraction to 2 fifths is 8 twentieths. Over to the other side, how did I get from 4 to 20? I multiplied by 5. So now I need to multiply my 3 by 5. 3 by 5 is 15. So my equivalent fraction is 15 twentieths. Now I just need to add up my numerators, leave my denominator as it is. 15 plus 8 is 23. So my answer, 23 twentieths, or in other words, 1 and 3 twentieths. Again, that skill there is pretty challenging. Look for it if you want to. So now it's your turn. Have a go at adding these fractions together with different denominators. Take your time, put your answers in the comments section. I'm going to try and mark every single one. Good luck. Press pause now. And there you have it. That is how to add fractions with different denominators. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, think about heading over to themathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more information and loads more videos about everything you need to know about your age group maths. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Peace out.